Hey everybody and welcome back to continuing coverage of YetiCon 2.0 held November 18th, 2023 in Lakewood, Colorado, Atlantic Rules Old School Magic the Gathering. We have reached the top four. We did cut to a top four playoff and finals. We are going to watch one top four match semifinal and then we will see in our final video the final match. Let's walk through your top four deck photos here on your screen. On the top left is Joe Yeti Nash coming in at four and one after our regular rounds on the blue white robot. Bots build. We did see that on the channel earlier in the rounds, and Joe is going to be facing off against Hans Feng at 4 and 1 on the bottom left of your screen. Hans is on a very cool blue red burn list with the Iron Claw Orcs and the Blood Moon, so watch out for those um, cards. They're going to be dangerous. Joe and Hans uh, went away from our feature table to play their semifinal match, so the match we are going to see on the channel here today, apologies to Joe and Hans uh, that we didn't capture your match for semis. Uh, David Merriam on the deck. You can see the build right there. The deck, a dangerous package, of course. Plenty of blue and white answers to things. We've got removal in the form of disenchant, swords to plowshares, two divine offerings main deck. Of course, plenty of counter magic and a full slate of counter spells, mana drain, and then you have a lot of your usual kinds of answers to other things that are pretty good, like the Abyss that takes creatures out, Mirror Universe, Regrowth, Demonic Tutor, the Blue Power. We've got just about everything to deal with answers on the board. Now, the answers that Dave is going to be looking for are against Matt Immig. Matt Immig at 5-0 and in the regular rounds on the bottom right of your screen for their semifinal match. Look at the cool, almost mono black build. Matt does splash in for some Blue Power and a Psy Blast. You can see that in there. So we have the slate of really effective black creatures. The Hypnotic Specters, the Order of the Ebon Hands, of course, Singer of Empire. Awesome, cool to see that uh, make the finals. We did see some Singer of Empires last year in the final match as well. Drain Life, Terror, and, and of course, some artifact answers for things and Dark Rituals to power it all out. So our semifinal match here is going to be David and Matt. Let's go take a look at the action for game number one. And here we are at the feature table here for our semi-final round between David Merriam on your left and Matt Immig on your right. David, of course, on the deck, and we just saw the deck list from both of these players. So David is taking a look. He's going to mulligan down to six, and it looks like we are ready for action here in the semi-final round. The uh, round timer has been called, and here we go. David taking a look at his opening set, seeing how he wants to lead out. He's going to say City of Brass and go. The deck is a very potent weapon that you need to treat with care, and you often need to try to win the deck before the deck gets a big build on the board established. David's going to tap two for a Felwar Stone. So already, Matt, I know, has got a lot of experience playing against David and the deck. And here comes a Hymn to Torak before David can get Counter Magic up. So that is a huge weapon against the deck. Discard spells are going to be really big. So there is a Swords to Plowshares and a Chaos Orb from David. So two of David's defensive cards are gone. So a Hypnotic Spectre next turn could be really big for Matt if David does not get a way to interact with it. David's going to attack with the Mishra's Factory, trying to put the pressure back on Matt as well, and passes the turn. This is an exciting game already here. Matt puts down a library. There is two black, and there is another him to Torak, and there is another swords and another factory from David. So David just about out of cards here. I think he was out of cards and drew one for his turn. Um, Matt with two early hymns against the deck is actually a really big game. David taps his City of Brass and the Felwar Stone down to 18. And he's going to swing in with the factory that he does have, the factories that he, he does have. So Matt experiencing pressure here. He's got a thir he's 13 life already just from factory attacks. But David is going to be out of answers. So if Matt can stabilize the board a little bit here, it's going to look good for him. But if he can't, it's going to be tricky for David for Matt to continue with two factories staring him down. Another one in the graveyard would have been an, <laughs> represented another threat. Uh, here comes, this is the Order of the Ebon Hand. It's the Pump Knight. It is a uh, black, black, 2-1. For one black mana, you can give it first strike to live turn. And for black, black, you can give it uh, plus one, plus O. Oh, so we can pump them and give them first strike. Big advantage card against factories if you can keep them around. It's also protection from white. Uh, we try. Matt tries a sinkhole on a, a factory, I believe, and David quickly with the counter spell. I believe David's out of cards though now. Matt's going to swing in, and I believe he's going to give it a pump. And there, David goes down to 15. And here comes another order. But right now, Matt is tapped out of black mana, so it's just a two-one pro white. So they are swords to plowshares proof. 
Matt getting pretty close to stabilizing here. Dave is going to swing back in because the, that other knight is not able to uh, pump or or give itself first strike yet or, or have first strike. So David sweeks a ping in while he can. Matt's at 11. Dave is still at 15. But if Matt can get a sinkhole to stick on one of those factories, it's going to be big trouble. David says no blocks on two knights coming in. Matt deciding how much he wants to pump. He could get it, uh, right now it's at four damage. He could get it up to six damage if he goes full pump. He's going to, it looks like he just um, allows four damage to go through. So David goes down to 11. Matt's going to play Demonic Tutor in the second main phase. And he still has three mana up. It's three underground seas are up. Matt does have a Library of Alexandria in play, but um, I believe he's been playing down off of it. Um, I'm not sure when the, what sequence that came out. There's an Ancestral Recall. That'll get him closer to uh, being on the library play. Boy, if Matt can start getting a card advantage engine over David, that's going to be a really big game against the deck. Both players at 11 life right now, both with uh, potential creatures on the board. David may be hoping for a balance here. Balance would be huge for David if he could rip it. There's a Soul Ring. That's not the balance that he was hoping for. Balance uh, can get rid of those protection from white creatures because it's not targeted, of course. And I know that uh, David does rock balance here in the deck, so balance could be nice, and then he could start swinging in with those factories. He's going to tap, and David has going aggressive here with those factories. He swings in for four. So David is going into race mode. And right now, I believe uh, David could be winning that race, but every black mana that Matt plays is uh, more damage for David. He's going to uh, pump and play Drain Life. That puts David down to 2, and Matt goes up to 12. So I believe there was no pump there. I think he swung for 4 and then just did a Drain Life for uh, the rest at the end of that attack. So that was, a, that was a pretty huge sequence right there instead of using the black mana, but you get a better value for it. There is a an attempt of the sorts to plowshares. Reminder that that's protection from white. And then David says, let's go on to game two. So very, very clutch drain life right there from Matt puts the pressure on David. And just like that, the deck is going to the sideboard down 1-0 against the almost mono black build of Matt. This is an exciting semifinal. Let's go and see what these players have for game number two. After sideboard here at game two, David's going to be on the play with the deck. Let's see what they came up with on their sideboard plans. Too early him to Torox for Matt was a really big game for David, emptying his hand and forcing David to play Matt's game. David had to play the uh, the aggressive uh, battle game. And so uh, it was not not on his side there with the with the knights. Matt has a library of Alexandria and a soul ring. So there's some mana right there. There's a strip mine for the library. He did get to draw off of it, I believe. Uh, and then David has a strip mine and say, says go on his side. City of Brass for David. And here comes another hymn to Torak. So another early hymn that Matt's able to get off before David can interact with it. There's a library and a Wrath of God. I believe that's a Wrath of God. Uh, Wrath of God's another effective card against the Pump Knights because it doesn't target. It's just all creatures are destroyed. So the pro-white creatures do go to the graveyard, cannot be rege regenerated to the Wrath of God. But uh, that is in the graveyard now. David's going to need a regrowth or a time twister to get that back into his hand. Very quickly, there's a sinkhole on the uh, City of Brass. And David has a plateau down. That's his mana source right now in the Fel Felwar Stone. There's a balance. Balance not taking care of any creatures on Matt's side, but it is going to force Matt to uh, discard some cards. And uh, I believe they're even on land. Looks like they're even on lands, even on creatures. And then um, Matt's going to have to discard some cards down to meet David's hand size. I don't see how many uh, David has in hand. Oh, it is one land on David's side. That's right, because he had he tapped the Mox Ruby. So David goes down to one land, and he has some, uh, so it looks like a swamp on top there. So it looks like he discarded four cards. So David, again, playing uh, unconventional magic, which the deck kind of forces you to do. Sometimes you can be on plan. Sometimes you have to go off plan. And uh, so David just playing the low hand size game, trying to stabilize the board. Matt has an untapped Navineral's Disc. 
So that disc, when it pops, will destroy all creatures and artifacts and enchantments in play. Uh, Matt does decide to pop the disc now, so Matt loses his mox, and David loses the Felwar Stone and a mox, and David now plays out the jet. If he had played the jet before, he would have lost that as well to the disc. So Matt has a Demonic Tutor on his side. He still has one mana up. Might go for the Ancestral Recall here to uh, draw three cards and maybe get a little bit of a card advantage over David. He has a blue mana up. He will tap it, and he will cast that Ancestral Recall. David uh, does not have enough for counter magic up. He just has an Underground C for blue, then a Plateau, and a Mox Jet for black. So that's a good opportunity to cast that. And now David says, I saw you just draw two. Let's have you, or draw three. Let's have you discard two. So David casts a quick Mind Twist uh, while he's tapped out. It's a Soul Ring and, oh, a Time Walk on, uh, on Matt's side. So Matt was not able to cast that Time Walk that he drew. There is a... Him to Torak and a quick. David drops a counter spell, but I actually just see an underground C on the him. All right, so now David has a, a, a Swords of Plowshares on the on the Hypnotic Specter. Yeah, I, I don't see another blue mana there, unless something happened quickly that I missed. Uh, over on Matt's side, he plays that. I believe that's our new City of Brass. That's our City of Brass from the event. Matt has a sinkhole on David's underground sea, so one of David's blue sources is down. Here's another hymn to Torak, and David does discard a disenchant, and I'm not sure if that's a was another counter spell right there. Another sinkhole on David's land. So both players just attacking each other's boards. This is actually really cool to see. Both players on plenty of life, 21 um, for Matt, 19 for David. They're playing out lands and uh <laughs> lands and artifacts and just kind of blowing each other's boards up now they're just ripping saying land go matt does get a factory tries to make it aggressive david says disenchant the draw go game is uh pretty cool here on this game too and remember this is a playoff game so this is this is a win and in game matt's up a game so if matt can uh matt can win this one he's moving on david's trying to force a game three now we've stabilized the board a little bit Matt's going to have a think. He's going to try a Dark Ritual and a Big Drain Life. Let's see if David has the counter for it. He does not. So Matt gets a huge life swing right here. David down to 11. And Matt is looking for more dice. He took, uh, I think, 8 damage there, it looks like. He went from 19 down to 11. And so Matt now with uh, extra dice here for his life. And now players are... Again, just uh, draw, drop a land, and go. This might be a case of uh, first card advantage, first book wins, I guess, here. So Matt does get an order down. Remember, that is pro-white, but it is not pro-red. So David says fireball for one on your order. You can pump it all you want, but you cannot get that toughness past one. So it's a one-for-one one lightning bolt for David. Uh, I did not see if David split that. I don't think David split that between Matt and the, and the knight. David had some mana to spare there with the Soul Ring, so he could have maybe done a couple damage to Matt and a couple damage to the Knight. He would have had to tap most of his uh, mana to do that. I'm not sure if he was trying to keep some mana up. But uh, his prime ob objective there was to get the Knight off the board, being at 11 as he is. Uh, David checking his graveyard. and Okay, so he has a, a Regrowth. And a regrowth on, I believe that is the Abyss. So David pops up the Abyss, and uh, in Matt's upkeep, the Knights go screeching into the Abyss. So yeah, the Abyss does gobble up uh, creatures. If they are pro-black, then you can target them with the Abyss, and it doesn't work. Or you can attempt to target them with the Abyss, it doesn't work. But uh, the pro-white Knights are not invulnerable to the Abyss. So David now with an Abyss and a Mishra's Factory on the board. David trying to establish a little bit more control with the book as well. So right now Matt is uh, looking... Matt has a couple of turns here before that book really starts to do damage. David's gotten one draw off of the book. Now he's untapping. He likely will start attacking over with the Mishra's Factory now. And Matt does say, Strip Mine on your Factory. So one Factory is down... 
And David is looking right now at this point to, to ride that book to some card advantage, drawing two cards a turn. He's going to be hitting his land drops, and he's going to uh, likely dig for another Oh, another factory, but David says Mirror Universe will also work. Mirror Universe can only be activated in uh, its controller's upkeep and you switch life totals. Matt on his side tries to cast a Greed. That's a nice card advantage engine for him, but that one gets countered quickly. David on his side takes some damage. He will untap and draw, so he does not use the Mirror Universe. He does not um, do the life total switch, but oh, David looks like he does do that, so... He drew the card at the end step. That wasn't his draw phase. That was his end step. He took some damage from the Cities of Brass. That's what happened there. Sorry, I missed that. So David, on the end step of Matt, took two damage from the City of Brass to draw off of the book, and then in David's upkeep, swapped life totals with Matt. Matt does play down an Order of the Ebon Hand. That's a threat, and here is a Hypnotic Spectre. That's another threat. So it looks like the Order resolves. David says, let the order resolve. There's a chaos orb on the field for David, so he can blow up one of those permanents. Now Matt says, let's try a vampire. Let's let's go with that. David says, vampire resolves, and I'll bolt your hippie, and I'll bolt your um, bolt your knight, and then that is it. So David brought in some action against that, and Matt says, let's go ahead and shuffle him up because the abyss there was going to gobble up one creature per turn, and I think that's why Matt played everything out to the board so you can at least have a few turns of attacking with the biggest threat that you can. So David is able to force a game three in this semifinal match. So let's see what these players come up with for the deciding rubber game for the championship. And on we go to game three, the deciding game for this semifinal match. This is for a chance to play for the championship here at the feature table at YetiCon 2.0. Both players taking a look. Matt's going to be on the play here after David won game two to force game three. Matt says, Swamp, and let's rock it. David on the draw says, ooh, a Library of Alexandria. He's going to draw a card. Uh, it's not the start you want to see from the deck. Let's see if Matt has a quick sinkhole. Uh, the sinkhole is not what comes out as a hymn to Torok, David says. I will sack my Lotus. I will counter that one with a Mana Drain. He's going to take a Mana Burn because you can't use all three of the blue mana from the Lotus. Uh, but he is going to get two colorless in his mana pool at the start of this main phase right here. So David has two colorless. He taps the library to draw another card. There's a Pearl. Now David does actually have to find a way to use this. So David plays out. He takes a damage from a city and plays out the Abyss. So he does tap that down. He uses that two mana to play out the Abyss. So that will uh, put a stop to any of Matt's uh, black creature threats. Matt does have a Mishra's Factory on the board, so that is Abyss proof. And we saw last game Matt uh, did some one thing you can do with the Abyss down is you can uh, save your creatures on one turn, stack them up. And then uh, just they're, they're going to lose one every upkeep, but you'll keep attacking. Matt does have the sinkhole for the Library of Alexandria. And then he attacks him with Mishra's Factory. David says, disenchant on your factory and let's go. So let's see if uh, David's going to try to build up his board advantage. Usually when you play against the deck players, that's what they'll do. They'll gain up a, a board advantage and a card advantage engine like the JM Day Tome. Of course, blue power helps with that. Matt looking to uh, end this game quickly if he can. Matt has an underground C on his side, and then David plays a quick Brain Geyser, takes a damage from the City of Brass. He's Brain Geysering for three, so it's like a five-mana Ancestral Recall. David down to 17, all of it self-inflicted from the City of Brass and Mana Burn. Matt says, sinkhole your Mishra's Factory. Matt's sinkholes have been put to very good use in this match we've seen. They've taken out some potent... Uh, utility lands like the factories and the libraries and, of course, uh, colored sources as needed as well. Here comes a Chaos Orb from David and then a quick follow-up on a Him to Torak from Matt. Him to Torak, David's going to lose two cards. He says, take the outside ones. It's a search to Plowshares and a Volcanic Island. I'm sure David is not... Uh, not as worried about those. Here's a mind twist on David's side, so that will empty Matt's hand. There's a Hypnotic Spectre and maybe a Black Knight there, I think, going into the graveyard. Neither of those creatures could uh, do anything with the Abyss. He'd have to attack them both in one turn. 
David has a book on board. Matt plays out a time walk just to draw another card and then plays the City of Brass. That's our um, proxy City of Brass from the event. Matt, at this point, draws a, yep, he, he draws a Navinerals disc. It comes in to play tapped, and then David has a quick disenchant for the disc. So the disc would have gotten rid of the, the book on David's side, the abyss on David's side, all of David's artifact mana. So that, that's a must disenchant. David continues to build up the card advantage, tapping that book every turn. Matt says, draw, go. Matt draws, plays an underground C and says, go. David draws again. And David still has a Chaos Orb on board for any troublesome permanence that might come to play on Matt's side. And David now does start to swing in with his Mishra's Factory. So it's time for the deck to get uh, aggressive or the deck to start wearing down his opponent's life total. David's drawing two cards every turn and laying out his mana. Yeah, you don't miss many uh, land drops when you're playing on the deck when you're drawing two cards a turn. David attacks again, and they're even at 16 now. David's damage again has been uh, largely self-inflicted by the City of Brass and Mana Burn. And uh, just as, as Matt sees that, uh, he passes the turn and extends the hand, and, and that is the match right there. So David's position was getting troublesome, getting overwhelming. His hand side was going to be full. Answers that Matt had would have been things like landing on a Veneral's disc, but uh, David with his full slate of counterspells, um, luckily, likely another disenchant. Divine Offerings may have still been in David's deck as the players take a look. There's Nether Void on Matt's side. So very cool that that one was brought in. That would have been a potent answer um, to the deck early in the game. Uh, but Matt was never going to be able to stick a black attacking creature uh, to do enough damage to David. So that's why we saw Matt uh, go ahead and scoop him up when they were both at 16. I think he saw that uh, the control was fully in place. So congratulations, Matt and David, for a great showing. Congratulations, David, on making it to the other or making it through to the final match. Over on the other table, Joe Yeti Nash was victorious in his semifinal match. So we're actually going to see our final match next video of David Merriam and Joe Yeti Nash for all the marbles here at YetiCon 2.0. We will see you there.